okay so next is nerve supply of external ear pinna has two surface the lateral surface and the medial surface the upper one third of the pinna is supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve right that comes from the mandibular division and that auriculotemporal nerve loops around the middle meningeal artery and supplies the upper third lateral surface of the pinna the complementary part on the medial surface is supplied by the lesser occipital nerve so that's very simple auriculotemporal nerve from the anterior side and lesser occipital nerve from the posterior side and the rest of the pinna is majorly supplied by the greater auricular nerve right and the concha the concha cavum and its complementary structure on the medial side and this one and the its complementary structure on the medial side it's it is supplied by the sensory branch of the facial nerve right this one is the sensory branch of the facial nerve and the auricular branch of the vagus nerve that's also called arnold's nerve or elderman's nerve similarly the anterior side of the external auditory canal is supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve and the posterior side of the external auditory canal is supplied by the auricular branch of vagus nerve and the sensory fibers of the seventh nerve now if you stimulate your pinna let's say if you put a mat stick inside your pinna and if you hit the posterior wall the vagus nerve will be stimulated and that can initiate a cuff reflex and sensory fibers of the seventh nerve if are damaged right since these are sensory fibers if these are damaged you won't feel any sensation in the posterior wall and this happens in acoustic neuroma where the seventh nerve is damaged and you don't feel anything in the posterior wall there is paresthesia or hyposthesia of the posterior meatal wall in facial nerve injury and that sign is called hitzelberger sign tympanic membrane has two surfaces the lateral surface and the medial surface lateral surface has same innervation as external auditory canal that means that the anterior has innervation through the auriculotemporal nerve and the posterior through seventh nerve and the tenth nerve and also since it has same innervation you don't need to anesthetize the tympanic membrane that lateral surface of the tympanic membrane when you infiltrate the external auditory canal it also gets anesthetized the medial surface of the tympanic membrane is innervated by tympanic plexus and which is formed by the jacobson's nerve which is a branch of ninth nerve now certain important points about the embryology of the ear as we have studied pinna is formed by the six axons of hillock they fuse and form the pinna external auditory canal develops from the first branchial cleft tympanic membrane is formed by the fusion of three germ layers the ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm malleus and incus are formed from the first arch whereas stapes suprastructure is formed from the second arch right and stapes foot plate and its annular ligament is formed from the otic capsule which is the hardest structure now two type of joint are formed first between malleus and incus that is incudo malleolar joint which is a saddle type of synovial joint and incudo stapedial joint which is a ball and socket type of synovial joint 